Let's talk about color correction in iMovie. I've got three different clips here down on the timeline and I've duplicated each one and applied a color correction to one version of each clip. So let's quickly go through and see the before and after so you know the kind of goals that we're going for here when we use color correction. So here's a dog on the beach and here's after color correction. Here's a view out of the window of an airplane coming into LA and here's after color correction and here's a video clip of a Channel Islands fox and here is after color correction. So before we can reach this final color corrected stage we first need to decide how we're going to describe the images and decide what aspects of them we need to enhance to make them look more realistic, more lifelike and how we can draw the attention of our viewer towards the relevant part of the image. So let's start with this first image here. It's quite a good example because I think I overexposed it just a tiny bit but generally it's it's in the right ballpark. The main issue with this image is that it's quite low contrast and there are several clues uh, that tell us that in the image. First of all, things that are supposed to be true black in the image like this woman's clothing, the area around the dog's mouth and the shadows in the seaweed and in the plants up here rather than being true black, they're actually like a washed out kind of milky gray. The second clue that we've got is that the colors are quite muted. The blues are muted and the greens aren't quite as vibrant as we'd see in real life. So iMovie has some tools that can help us fix that. So let's first select the clip on the timeline and head over to the color correction tab above the viewer. The first tool that we're interested in is this contrast and brightness adjustment. We've got three solid colored icons on the ends and in the middle and they adjust the brightness or darkness of the shadows, the brightness of the entire image and then finally at the end we've got the brightness of the highlights in the image. Then the remaining two icons, these kind of half moon icons, adjust the global contrast of the whole image and as you move one, the other one moves with it. But I'm just going to undo that and to adjust the contrast of the image I'm actually first going to adjust these brightness adjustments because by adjusting the brightness of selective tones in the image we can actually also adjust the contrast of the overall image and then once we've made adjustments to the brightness then we'll use the contrast adjustments to do any kind of fine tuning afterwards. So the first thing we pointed out was that the blacks in the image weren't true black so let's start with the shadows adjustment and I'm going to bring that all the way down and you can see immediately that's made a huge difference to the contrast of the whole image. If I just undo that, you'll see the difference that that's made, not just to the blacks, but to the whole image. It just looks a lot more pleasing now, a lot more contrasty. And also the colors are starting to pop immediately. We've got a lot greener greens and a lot bluer blues. So we've still got a little bit of overexposure on the brightest area, areas of the shot so I'm just going to take the brightness of the highlights down a touch and you can see there that the color in the dog's face is returning as I bring that down let's just undo that and do it again so you can see just to bring some detail back in in the dog which is the main subject of this shot anyway you can see that we've brought the blacks of this piece of clothing down by moving the shadows adjustment down and we've got some sun on the piece of clothing so it's reasonable to expect different shades of black and gray across that so I'm pretty happy with that. I think if we were to bring the blacks down even more if we could it'd start to look quite unnatural. So now we've got an opportunity to adjust the contrast, the global contrast using these icons but I don't think we need to in this case. If we wanted to drop the blacks even further and increase the contrast we could like that and you can see they both move at the same time but you can see we're losing detail in the highlights again so I'm just going to undo that and I'm just going to leave that where it is. Now one downside to adjusting the contrast and it's completely normal when you're color correcting is that when you increase the contrast of a scene you also increase the saturation or the vibrance of the colors and we saw that in the greens and the blues popping out but you can see that we've perhaps altered the skin tones a little bit too much here so we can counteract that using the saturation slider. Once we've made our contrast adjustments we can move on to the saturation in that order and just take a little bit of saturation out. 
If we take it too far, we'll turn the image black and white too far the other way, and it becomes this kind of psychedelic, unrealistic kind of scene. So we just want to take zero there and then just take a little bit out. And I'd say that that's, that's quite engaging, that's quite realistic. And just by increasing the contrast of this image, we've drawn our viewers' attention towards uh, what's going on here. We've got a dog off leash, which is what we're talking about in that part of the script. Let's move on to the second example. In this example, we've got a heavily underexposed scene. It's far too dark. And again, I was kind of rushing to film this. Uh, I knew we were landing in LA soon, so I just wanted to get this scene. And I guess I was worried about over exposing this area here, which was super bright. Uh, so I underexposed everything, but that was a mistake in retrospect because there's nothing interesting over here anyway. And I still lost all the detail there. It's still heavily blown out. There's no detail here. It was so bright. And I should have just exposed for the stuff in the foreground because that's what we're most interested in seeing in this scene. Um, but there are some tools we can use to fix this. So let's select the clip on the timeline again. And because we're talking about overall brightness here, which is the main issue of this um, clip, we're going to take this overall brightness adjustment and we're just going to pump it up quite a bit. And you can see as we do that, we lose contrast. If we just undo that, we can see that it's already a low contrast image. There's no true blacks here. But as we increase the brightness, we reduce that contrast even more. But we're going to get this brightness to around where we can actually see things that we were interested in seeing in the foreground. And now we're going to take our shadow slider and we're just going to reduce this a tiny bit just to bring back some of that contrast. And then the brightness of the highlights, I'm actually going to bring up to further boost the contrast of the scene. So to increase the difference between the absolute highlights and the absolute shadows of the scene. And I'd say that might be a little bit too much. I'm just going to throw this completely out because it's not interesting anyway. And maybe bring the overall brightness down just a tiny bit. Just play with that. Just keep on adjusting each one. And now I'm roughly where I need to be. Now I can play with the global contrast adjustment using these ones. I'm just going to pump up the contrast just a little bit. And you can see we've already got a major improvement over our original image. Now I'd say the remaining issue with this image is that there's a lot of blue here. Even in the darkest parts, so we, see, we see our shadows have kind of got this blue tint to them. And that's due to the haze in the scene and the time of day and probably my white balance and everything. So let's head over to this temperature adjustment tool here. And we can just move the slider to the right a bit to add a little bit of yellow. If we move it to the left, it adds blue. We've already got enough blue, so we're just going to counteract the blue with a little bit of orangey yellow. Too much, and it becomes this kind of sickly green. So we're just going to play with that until it looks a little bit more natural. It kind of looks a bit smoggy, but that's true to how LA really is. And again, if we hover over these two examples, we can see that we've improved from the original quite substantially. Let's bring the original back down. There's a big improvement there from one to the next. Let's move on to the final example. We have a Channel Islands fox that actually lives on those Channel Islands, funnily enough. Um, and all weekend I'd kind of seen it not doing much other than scavenging around people's campsites and sleeping. And then finally I saw it kind of pick up this dead bird and it was like really interesting bit of behavior and I overexposed it because I knew that if I'd spent any more time getting my exposure right, I was actually going to miss the action. And as I've been telling you guys all through this class, content trumps quality every time. But that's not to say that we can try and improve this image once we bring it into the edit. Okay, so we select the clip on the timeline again. And because we're talking about the opposite problem to the previous clip, which was too dark, this image is too bright. So we're going to take the global brightness adjustment and we're going to take it down this time quite substantially. And you can see immediately not only are we introducing more color back into the coat of the fox, but we're actually reducing the brightness of those distracting blades of grass in the foreground. And it draws our attention towards the main action in the scene, the most important part of the image. 
Now we've done that, I'm going to reduce the brightness of the highlights even further and reduce how distracting those blades of grass are even more. And you can see that it's already a very contrasty image. You can tell by the shadow underneath the ear here that I shot it in midday, but unfortunately a lot of wild animals don't wait for great lighting to do interesting things, so that's just the way it panned out. But what that means is it's quite high contrast lighting, like we talked about in week three, and I don't need to introduce any more contrast than is already required. I don't think we need the saturation slider, it's already quite saturated, and I don't think we need the color adjustment either. I think I've got the color pretty good here. I don't think if I add warmth, it's going to look weird. If I add blue, you can see it's the blue's creeping into the coat here as well. So I'm just going to undo that adjustment. I'm, that's, I'm reasonably happy with that. And again, if I bring down a little bit of the original, you can see it's a huge improvement from what we started with.